You know, so much of what's going on on the internet is so blatantly demonic and insane that I, I think people are becoming desensitized to a, tri a politically tribalized landscape that is not just unhealthy, it is starting to become dangerous, where we are dehumanizing other people uh, in the name of drawing boundaries around what are acceptable identities to have. And what, what I think encapsulates this extremely well is this insipid, narcissistic, totalitarian video that's been going absolutely viral on Twitter of AOC celebrating the censorship, the censorship of people that she disagrees with. And a quote that, that uh, from this video is her essentially celebrating totalitarian um, censorship. After all the credits have rolled, and then you see like, Tucker Carlson is out at Fox News. The casual celebration of um, someone being censored just because they disagree with you. So couldn't have happened to a better guy um, because he's clearly such a terrible person. I mean, he he. <laughs> Let me guess. Well, he's a white man, so he's automatically a predator. He's a conservative white man who says what he thinks, so he's a terrorist. And he speaks the truth. So he incites violence. Let's see if I got that right. What I will say, though, is while I'm very glad that the person that is arguably responsible for the some of the largest driving some of the most uh, amounts of death threats and violent threats, not just to my office, but to plenty of people across the country. <laughs> it's, it's so it's so insipid and uh, condescending. The fact that the people that are on the radical left who are censoring people and celebrating blatantly immoral things think that they're the good guys is is um, sh is a testament to their insanity. They're they're. These people are so insane and detached from reality, they are. Uh, they are admitting a mode of existence that is antithetical to morality for the sake of being antithetical to morality. It is like goodness inverted. There, there's, a, there's a term for that. It's called evil. Um, I also kind of feel like I'm like waiting for the cutscene at the end of a Marvel movie after all the credits have rolled. And then you see, like, the villain's, like, hand. Right, because they're the good guys who censor people. They're the compassionate people who say, your opinion doesn't matter because you disagree with us and you're a bad person. And the, per and the people that call them out on it, they're the villains in Marvel movies. This is how they see themselves and this is how they see the world. It, it, is, it is devoid of any coherence or rational analysis whatsoever because all that matters is... They are, they are the good guys because their ideology hands them counterfeit virtue as a result of adhering to their ideology. And by the way, this isn't even about Tucker because Tucker's going to do great and I think he's already doing his own thing and, uh, you know, he has a massive fan base. This is about exposing the fact that the radical left is so ravaged and feverishly gripped by the resentment of Marxism, by the totalitarian evil impulses that tell people who are acting in the most hateful ways that they're good people. It is about exposing the fact that these people are, are, are messed up. AOC is essentially, archetypally speaking, you could think of it as like possessed by some sort of demon here. This is, this is essentially celebrating uh, radical left-wing totalitarianism, which killed more people than Hitler in the 20th century. Reemerge out to grip, grip over like the end of a building or something. 
But because 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 Tucker is a creature. He is he is a deformed monster that's going to grip around the side of a building. This is the type of propaganda that preceded heinous disasters in history. Catastrophes. This 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 type of rhetoric is 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 obviously disturbing, obviously evil. It's obviously in the inverse of good, but it is also saying that they're calling this inverse of good virtue because that's what their ideology tells them. So they don't view you as people, and this is what you need to understand. The radical left doesn't view you as a person. And if you don't know what that means, you need to read history. But deplatforming works, and it is important. And um, there you go. Good things can happen. Tucker Carl's grip over. Good things can happen from deplatforming. Deplatforming works. Supporting censorship blatantly. The, the guys, the, it, it, the left is openly supporting censorship of people they disagree with. The right isn't doing this. Even the radical right isn't doing this. Do you guys understand? There is no political identity besides the radical left that is supporting the censorship of people they disagree with. And the reason they can call themselves the good guys while supporting something as heinous and immoral as this is because their ideology tells them that they are somehow miraculously virtuous and compassionate for doing, for, for doing and having the worst moral positions. This is, this is what happened in history that, that caused catastrophes insane catastrophes people doing heinous things while thinking they were good while doing it because their ideology told them they're good you're not a good person if you support censoring people you disagree with you're not that's called totalitarianism that's called being a tyrant there, there, there's, there's not a, there, this isn't a, a debate. This isn't, um, you know, me positing opinions for, for debate or, um, or, or any type of competitive scrutiny. I'm just telling you what this is. This, this, this is, this is, um, this is where we are. And, you know, this is, this is just one instance of it. I saw, uh, tweets by Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren, another radical face of the, of the insane left blatantly saying that she wanted to pack the Supreme Court for the reason of overriding the opinions of the radical judges who are standing for life because they uh, reversed Ro Roe v. Wade. Okay, guys, so I just wanted to add on to the AOC video that I was making, basically um, exposing the extreme totalitarian nature of the radical left by including this video of Dylan Mulvaney saying that if you call him a man, you should go to jail. You should be breaking the law and you should be arrested. But this example is one that I thought I should add in because Dylan Mulvaney is an embodiment of left-wing insanity and insistences that go counter to all objective frameworks and reality. He looks like a man. Most of society has, uh, you know, rejected the absurd claims made by the left, has mocked Dylan Mulvaney. But the reason I believe that people are resisting, you know, this figurehead of the radical left, if you will, to such heights is because it's so blatantly absurd and it almost seems like a coordinated, orchestrated attack on reality, sort of like a psyop, a psychological op on the everyday person to test them, to try to see if they would give in to the degeneracy, if they would look at this man in a dress and say, yes, this is a woman. If they would look at this guy, you know, with a tampon, you know, in a tampon commercial and think to themselves, yes, this is normal. Yes, this makes sense. And so... So I want to play this video real quick of Dylan Mulvaney saying that you should go to jail if you think he's a man and call him a man. Like the articles written about me using he pronouns and calling me a man over and over again. 
<laughs> yeah, because you're a man. I, I feel like that should be illegal. I, I don't know. That's, that's just bad journalism. I feel that should be illegal. I feel that should be illegal. Dil Mulvaney is saying that if you call him a man, if you even use he pronouns, that should be illegal. This isn't a new conversation because it took place in Canada with the bill C-16. Jordan Peterson resisted when people were having the conversation of it should be illegal to use pronouns that somebody doesn't agree with. And uh, this, is, this is a sentiment that is birthed and of the radical left. There is no... There is no other way of looking at that there is no other origin story that competes this is simply a totalitarian fever dream of the radical left to force people to agree with them by fiat of the government conservatives don't do this and if they were doing this i would immediately call it out that's why i view politics as extremely surface level because it's it's not a reflection of underlying principles. Right now, the underlying principles of the right seem to be freedom, liberty, free speech, and uh, there, there, are, there are principles, there, there are some principles of morality, but more so I see the conservative movement as just standing for the conceptual idea of objective morality itself against, you know, the headwind of moral insanity, moral nihilism, um, and just nihilism in general, the, the general resentment and, and hatred for judgment is is um what conservatives stand against so so i did think that i should include this because it is just a solidification of the fact that the figureheads the embodiments the cornerstones of the radical left are undeniably and self-admittedly totalitarian and immoral so there you go